For more insight on tomorrow's election in Iran, we are joined here tonight by Karim Sajapur. He's a leading researcher and analyst on Iran and an associate at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Thanks very much for being with us. Uh, we should point out that there is a great deal of interest in this election, both in Iran and elsewhere. But it should not be thought that these are totally free and fair, correct? That's right, Martin. Certainly by Middle East standards, Iranian elections are, are fairly democratic in the sense that it's not a given. The results are not a given. Uh, but I describe these elections as unfree, unfair, and unpredictable, because we certainly don't know uh, the outcome tomorrow. All of these candidates, before they could even get on the ballot, had to be approved by the clerics, correct? That's right. Uh, candidates are carefully pre-screened by an entity called the Guardian Council. So, uh, you know, only uh, individuals who are considered loyal to revolutionary ideals are allowed to run. And even after that, that after that pre-filtering process has taken place, uh, you do have improprieties which take place in, in the campaign and in the voting booth. And that being said, then, does it really matter? Would there be any significant change of Iranian policy, say, to the rest of the world, regardless of who wins? I do think these elections do matter. What we saw uh, with Ahmadinejad's presidency is that he was denying the Holocaust and rejecting Israel's existence. His predecessor, Mohammad Khatami, was calling for a dialogue of civilization. So certainly there's some stylistic changes, but also substantively, if you have more moderate, uh, uh, a more moderate president elected in Tehran, I think you may have a group of individuals who come to office who seem genuinely interested in reforming the country and trying to reach a modus vivendi with the United States. There has been a tremendous amount of passion of which Iranians have been following these, primarily these two candidates, Mr. Mousavi and, and uh, President Ahmadinejad. Say that either man does not win, in other words, their candidate doesn't win, do you think there's a possibility there could be disturbances? I think, think certainly that's within the realm of, realm of possibilities, that especially if Ahmadinejad doesn't win, that his supporters will come out and they're not afraid to bash some heads and that we may see a tumult. Uh, in the case that Mousavi loses, absent some type of major fraud, I think you know, his, his, his constituents will be very upset, but they're usually not the type of people that go out into the streets and wage street battles. And lastly, President Obama made the historic speech where he reached out to the Muslim world. It was thought to have had an impact on the elections in Lebanon. Do you think it has any impact on the elections in Iran? I think the election of Barack Obama in general has created some ease amongst the hardliners in Tehran who want to continue this adversary relationship with the United States. I think whereas the Bush administration united Iran's disparate political factions against the common threat, what Obama is doing by reaching out to Iran is essentially creating cleavages within the Iranian regime between those who want to continue this death to America culture of 1979 and the vast majority who recognize that it's time to move on. Karim Sajapur, we appreciate very much your insight. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.